Good evening, everyone. I am Daryl D'Souza, founder of Earthkeepers Connect and convener of the New Earth Summit, your host for this evening. And it is the 27th day of the pre-summit webinars leading up to the New Earth Summit in November. That's the second edition of India's first integrative summit on solutions to our problems in health, food, farming, and environment. I extend a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists of this evening, also on behalf of our 10 Earthkeeper groups in India and overseas, and we express our gratitude to you for taking out time from your busy schedules to share with us your wisdom so that all watching this webinar and its recording later may understand why we need to take good care of our mangroves and why forest nurseries are very important now. That's our topic for this evening, forest nurseries and mangroves for coastal economy. So I will start with introducing our panelists uh, to the audience. Kalpana Chaudhary has a PhD from the ICAR Institute of Central Marine Fisheries Research, that's the ICAR is the Institute of Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute in Kochi, followed by work experience in a prom farm run by Hindustan Lever Limited. She also worked as a lecturer in the fisheries college at, at Vera Vai, being a certified technologist for the fisheries exporting companies was her forte. Due to family responsibilities, she turned to her second love which is computers, training and developing technologies to simplify office practices, which has been the main objective. During the COVID uh, period, she has put in a concerted effort to create awareness on automation of using Office uh, Microsoft Office Excel uh, to over 100 people. And it is also being used as a great tool for MIS and reporting uh, technique that is now being dispersed. So projects on that are being taken up with several ICAR and other institutes. Conservation of nature is the requirement of the day, she says, and due to the fisheries background uh, that she has, with a keen interest on the mangroves and the fishery sector, that is uh, her preference. Our next panelist, uh, Romain San Francisco, holds a master's degree in public administration. A 15-year stint as Projects Coordinator of Center for Hepatology, Pioneer and Conservation, Research, and Ecological Studies in mainland India and the Andaman and Nicobar Archipelago, providing solid grounding in environmental issues. As Project Head of Samarpan Foundation, Chennai, she conceptualized an outdoor lab laboratory of learning through applied sustainable practices, raising forest nurseries, mangroves, organic farming, mosquito eradication, rainwater harvesting, and waste management. She is the chairperson of Environment, which is the Goa chapter, ALL, All Ladies League, and has received awards for Rose of Rizwan, achievement in the field environment and exceptional women of excellence 2018 from the women's economic forum so wonderful to have uh, both of you on uh, board with us now to discuss this very important uh, to topic and also share your experiences and uh, advice so here is our first uh, question for the panelists why is managing mangroves uh, so vitally important for a coastal place like Goa? Kalpana, if you could start on this. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I will be sharing my screen. I have a small PowerPoint presentation to show you regarding this. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, everybody who is attending this. Uh, very warm welcome to all of you all. Thanks, Daryl, for giving me this opportunity. And Romain, nice meeting you again after a long time. Uh, so I would like to first talk about mangroves in the sense, what exactly is mangroves? What are we talking about when we talk about mangroves? 
before we talk what is vital for mangrove for goa where uh, mangroves are concerned okay so let me introduce what mangroves are so what we understand is mangroves are trees okay they are plants but uh, that's uh, not uh, that is partially true though not totally true these are the trees we conceptualize if we go from uh, panjim to ribandar we can see this on the uh, canal over there chorao islands divar islands we are able to see a lot of them okay but uh, these are only part of the mangrove system this is what a mangrove actually looks like other than this the most important thing about the mangroves is this and this is what is called as the prop uh, uh, roots uh, aerial roots pneumatophores they are also called they are called as knee roots that is they have a small uh, hole at the top the oxygen goes in through those to the roots which are deep below so they actually have a, they are very deeply rooted so they are very firm in the soil and they are really good okay so this is what a mangrove plant is actually but mangrove is not just a plant it's an ecosystem it's what is the meaning of an ecosystem ecosystem is what everything come put together is so mangroves uh, plants are only a part of it what are the rest of it they are actually habitats for terrestrial organisms you can see birds even humans going there so they are uh, a part of the mangrove ecosystem other than this they are all they also harbor the fish and the shellfish so fish that is uh, from the small gobies to the sharks they come here they are the breeding grounds the mangroves are breeding grounds for them so they come here so the fish on a pallet comes or on a plate comes only if the mangroves exist that is if they are allowed to breed over there if they are allowed to live over there shellfish of course all the clams the mussels that you eat they are a lot of them are here so where exactly do these mangroves exist they exist at the intersections of the rivers and the seas so the river has a uh, sweet water the mangroves uh, sea has the salt water so there is something called as an estuarine region which is slightly salty in nature mangroves exist over there so where exactly do mangroves exist in 118 tropical and subtropical countries they exist and out of these 118 uh, countries indonesia tops the list in the area that mangroves exist in indonesia other than this mangroves also exist in lot of other countries where india is one of them and in india the biggest mangroves exist in west bengal in the sundarbans where the royal bengal tiger tiger is being conserved you have the pichavaram in tamil nadu and you have in goa you have mangroves it's not that goa doesn't have dense mangroves you can look at this picture and imagine how dense the, the mangroves in goa are or where in certain places certain places they have been chopped up okay so i would like to also show you a picture of the actual existence of the mangroves this is a small area of goa where the actual mangrove areas are located so here you can see the mandovi estuary over here you can see the swari estuary you can see the charao islands you can see the divar islands and the kumbhja canal you can see all the dots you see are the mangroves so you have such a rich population of mangroves in goa and then we say ah mangroves are important for us of course they are the mangroves are very important because they form the habitat like i told you all the uh, fish from the sea come here to breed they are a habitat for the fish other than this they also habitat uh, they are habitats for the shellfish other than these the birds which come and feed on the fishes they are habitats for them so mangroves is a have a, and by the mangrove trees by themselves are very useful these are some of the examples of the mangrove uh, trees that are present or shrubs that are present all of them have oblong leaves okay they are flowering plants but these are also getting depleted there are endangered species among these so one of the endangered species of the mangrove plants is the candelia candel this plant is getting is already on the endangered list so we can imagine that 
being an uh, the crocodiles are another species which are being endangered we can imagine that we have species being endangered already when we are looking at mangroves as a sustainable right so habitat is one of the main important things of mangroves other than that is protection to whom does it protect other than the fish which it considers as the nurseries or the breeding grounds of the fish it protects us believe it or not the 2007 uh, tsunami is known to everyone tamil nadu faced the brunt of it right and when tamil nadu faced the brunt of it indonesia was another country which faced the brunt of it but in indonesia in a place called asar as in indonesia the mangroves in front of the settlements resulted in 8% fewer casualties than the other region so it actually saved people here in the same the more recent example you would have heard of cyclone gaga right it so it was again in the coast so on december 3 2018 muttupet in tiruvarur district was one of the coastal towns which was facing the rot of the gaga cyclone but unlike other places the damage was very less because of the damage so if we are talking about protection forget about it protecting the animals it's protecting us let's think about this so third thing is it's, it's a resource for us what type of resource fish of course because the fish from here grow go to the sea and we catch them and eat fishing in the mangrove itself is a option that people look at they go with lines and fish so fish of course other than fish jobs okay jobs in the form of fishing itself is a job other than this ecotourism is one of the main things that is catching up if you see charav islands the uh, dr salim ali bird sanctuary that is there you have trips on the mangroves spotting birds if you go there it is a very good job opportunity for lot of people other than this mangroves are resources what types of resources are mangroves mangroves are something called as a blue carbon carbon ecosystem what is blue carbon ecosystem our land is storing carbon all the time right the mangrove ecosystem stores 10 times more than the terrestrial it occupies only 0.1% of the whole earth but it is playing such a important role so the blue carbon in this uh, ecosystem plays a very very important role in climate change we everybody is talking about climate change now everybody is talking about everything that needs to be saved for climate change mangroves are one of the most important things other than this it also helps us in purifying the water sewage which goes there it pur purifies the sewage water. water which is contaminated with heavy metals it purifies that it also has high levels of oxygen due to its metamorphosis so if we look at goa goa has such a long coastline lo goa has mangroves do we think that goa doesn't require mangroves of course goa biggest resource is mangroves it should take advantage of the mangrove ecosystem that exists in it should make because the timber in the mangroves itself is a very big, big uh, asset for goa so everything in the mangroves is important for goa so goans need to realize that mangroves are very very important so daniel does this uh, answer your question yes uh, yes uh, kalpana thank you very much thanks a lot kalpana i'll yeah. stop sharing Yes, and some of the pictures reminded me also of my younger days uh, fishing over here in North Goa. Right. Like, uh, you know, I used to go, uh, of course, closer to my house. The entire, you know, Shinkeri strip I fished, the entire Nerul strip I fished, the Baga strip I fished, and Anjuna also I fished. So I've seen this uh, very specifically. Uh, you know, where these, uh, where the mangroves are, and all these reefs, how the fish are breeding over there, the small ones, and then the. you know what happens when the tide comes in and the tide goes out and one day they become big enough and they are going out to the sea i have okay. really seen all of that and it's so important uh, for people here to realize that the point that you made that it's actually the breeding ground uh, where all the eggs are stored where the water 
uh, flow is not so fast like the open sea or the bay. Right. Slow water flow is where all these fishes breed. So very important uh, point. And of course, the other points also that you mentioned, uh, it's a barrier and a protector and for all the wildlife and the birds as well. Romain, could you please uh, share with us, uh, you know, your your take on, you know, the importance of mangroves. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Kalpana, Dr. Kalpana has given us a scientific overview. <clears throat> and um, what can I add to that is what I'm just thinking. Um, you know, well, from a practical point of view, I'm not a, my, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a marine biologist, so any of that sort. And I just got into mangroves by sheer need to get into it because of the situation in Chennai after the, after the tsunami. And uh, I stumbled upon this because of a serious problem of uh, saltwater intrusion in a place called Velicheri. So this is a vital point of mangroves. Uh, just, to, just to give you an example of what uh, Dr. Kalpana has just uh, explain, you know, what went wrong in Chennai is due to the lack of the mangroves, which nobody realized. Talking about how vital it is for a coastline, Chennai's lifeline is the mangroves if they don't put it back. And, and you can imagine what a coastline like Goa is going to face if we don't save what we have and stop bickering about, it's okay to remove them. Uh, because it, when you hear what happened, and I, and I just have to keep coming back to Chennai because that's where my strengths were and where I stumbled upon this problem. Was well, I Ruben, thought, yeah. Ruben, uh, like you mentioned, no, that uh, uh, remove them. Uh, uh, so what are, what are the uh, things that, you know, uh, government or you know, the coastal uh, people are doing? Or is it from the state itself? They are, are they dumping landfill over there to clean the land? Or how are they kind of destroying the mangroves? Well, how it's being destroyed is, I mean, from what you can see, the backup flow in the creeks in Panjim is nothing but all that overload. This is how, why I'm drawing a comparison with what happened to Chennai. And the tsunami came soon after. In their wisdom, the politicians decided, uh, or the government the, you know, decided, this Buckingham Canal that runs a 30 kilometer stretch through the city, they just decided to do an MRTS, a rapid transport system and plonked it in the middle of the Buckingham Canal. A good distance of it runs the Metro, I mean, the MRTS runs through this Buckingham Canal, which looked like a dried up drain, you know, a sludge, so to say. But what people didn't, and then, of course, they removed the locks, which is exactly what you have in your Kazan land, you know, when your ancestors allowed this uh, water to come in, it was actually artificially created to give your fish curry rice right near your home, in your fields. So they planted this, this artificial planting of the mangroves with this super geoengineering that they got this water and that's why you have a tidal inflow of 40 kilometers. So they utilize that through the rivers and network system to get each and every part of Goa flooded uh, during, during the off season so that they could have fishing and uh, then they could, when the fields are dry, they could have, you know, they could have their farming. So that's, and then they made the bunding around these places and controlled it with rivulets and sluice gates. So now I'm talking about a bigger version like the Buckingham Canal, which runs through the city of Chennai. It's a 400 kilometer stretch of man-made a man-made canal running from Andhra Pradesh to and starts in Chennai and goes up to Andhra Pradesh, 430 kilometer stretch of a man-made canal. And they brought in seawater and they planted mangroves on either side. This was done by the British. And it was a channel to bring in goods. They used the waterways for advantage, which is now what people are talking about. You know, we must use our rivers uh, and all that. But the problems attached is this. So People along the way on the on the either side of the Buckingham Canal lived happily with it until uh, somehow over a period of time after the British left, they decided to link the rivers. They de decided to link the Adia River and the Coombe River, which were fresh. The Coombe River was a freshwater river and linked it to the Buckingham Canal where it crosses over. That's what 
caused the problem. That was the first step of the problem. And the second one was removing the locks, the controlled factors, the lock, the gates, which is a bigger version of your sluice gates on either side of this Buckingham Canal, the entry and was controlled at high tide and low tide, just to let in enough water for the boats to flow through and goods to be ferried. So over a period of time, Chennai lost its mangroves and kept lopping it away. People on the seaward side, on the village side, were growing their rice on either side, uh, on, on that side of the, of the Buckingham Canal. Why was that? Because they had the salt accumulating mangroves planted on, on, on either side as a barrier. And it was a beautiful waterway, which is now, I mean, I don't know if any of the audience knows what the Buckingham Canal looks like at this point. So disaster struck when they dumped in all this huge load of what happens when you construct, like what you're doing now in, in Goa. What's happening to this huge flyover and all that debris? You think they're going to be so meticulous about taking it away? They're just going to dump it in the nearest water body and the earth, this was plonked in the Buckingham Canal. So this blocked up everything. And then came the seawater intrusion with the tsunami when there was nothing to stop the flow. So it found this lower level because seawater is rising over a period of time. And that's the greatest danger of a coastline. The seawater rise and all areas lower to the Buckingham Canal like will happen in Goa. And that's why people are facing a saltwater intrusion is because of the rise in seawater. And what controls that is the root systems of mangroves. These control the tidal flow. They, they handle the sedimentation and like Kalpana and, and we spoke about a little while before the started. Can you imagine the kind of sedimentation these rivers are facing? That's an overkill for the mangroves. I mean, there's a limit to everything. Just like human beings, a poor system like the mangroves is struggling to cope, especially in these congested creeks and waterways where most of this development has happened. So that's one point where they do such a fabulous job. The mangroves were put there in the, in the inside areas around the Kazans so that that would be free of this and it would stem the flow, regulate the flow of water and stabilize the coastline. So what- By that you mean that it would, uh, it would mitigate the salt water coming into the land. Yeah. Uh, because if the salt water keeps on coming into the land, then farming can be done in salty water. Correct. Correct. So it has the ability, it's a natural desalination plant. Right. So it absorbs all this because of, of its, uh, and if it's in a salt, uh, in the salt pans, it excretes salt. So the kinds of varieties that grow wherever they grow, and Dr. Kalpana can elaborate on that. Just imagine a tree doing this job, taking up all this salt in its leaves and, you know, uh, retaining it and giving you fresh water. So we grew rice in Chennai. And that's, that's exactly what they're doing here. You can grow rice, but the minute you remove your mangroves, because Chennai doesn't have the kind of rice that Goa has, salt resistant, as I told you in my previous talk, you're spending millions and a research foundation in Chennai is spending millions trying to find a rice that will grow in, in saline water. And here in Goa, we have four, five species. So anyway, coming to the point of this, the wave action, the, the salt water intrusion, is the pressure is your water, your, your, your lakes on either side, your creeks, and the uh, stems that uh, the whole force of the ocean, you know, the wave action. Yes. Imagine if that goes from the mouths of the estuaries, which we did in Chennai. The reason I'm telling you this is Mutukadu is devoid. Mutukadu is the main mouth and the Adyar mouth, in the Koom River. This is all devoid of mangroves. So the sea comes in with no checks and there's no locks, there's nothing. So what happens? Everything yes. goes and disappears to its lowest level. So groundwater is lost by the, with the every tide. And uh, so that's, I mean, I would consider that extremely vital, a vital point for Goa, that they do not remove mangroves where they're necessary because all these hinterlands are linked to the sea. There's a 40 kilometer ingress of seawater from all of your rivers connected to the sea. What do you think is going to happen if there's nothing to control this magnitude and this uh, network of uh, water bodies? 
and of course the habitat the habitat that it gives you the priceless fish that have to breed your crustaceans this is the this is the lifeline of any goan this is his fish curry rice that's why the term was coined fish curry rice because they grew the rice on the alluvial plains and then they fished and now what do they do they stand at the market and wait for the trucks to come in from somewhere else formal in waste yes so very good point uh, made there uh, uh, rumain thank you for that and uh, so 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 much of the water that's coming in land into goa um and this uh, the clear danger of you know the farmers on those edges uh, not uh, with over a period of time not being you know able to farm slowly and even with this nationalization of river, rivers and the dredging they're going to do for it right that is also going to be taking out the mangrove isn't that so of course this is what they did to the buckingham canal they dredged it it was already a problem and then they spent a huge amount of money and brought in these huge dredging machines to make matters worse for salt water to come in even to that magnitude i was personally taken there in these one of these fabulous dredgers from korea or wherever they imported it I said oh my god with just this trickle this problems you don't see the salt water but it comes and goes it disappears and so they dredged they dredging dredged the buckingham canal to a good limit until the funding ran out and swallowed up so half i think was done and half was left incomplete with the next government but that's how much more salt water is going to go into your waterways unchecked if you don't have the mangroves and you can imagine what's going to happen to the villages around these areas just imagine the scenario yes so so that's going to be a loss of yeah damage to our farmers and uh, with this upcoming you know uh, uh, dredging of uh, the rivers in goa for the barges i mean we are going to see another uh, real disaster uh, if the problem is you know already not big enough the checks and balances are not in place if there's going to be more sedimentation if it's going to be a lot of other junk dumped into it already the, the the system is struggling ecosystem is struggling to retain this and that's why people think it's to do with the mangroves not stopping the flow of water they are clogged more than the capacity believe me romain i'll tell you last year we did a cleaning of the mangroves yes we took around 5 to 6 hours and we were some 10 to 15 of us over there when we went i felt as though the mangroves were crying that they could not breathe there you are and what is the muck that is there other than the bottles the pampers of the children all sediments from the beaches coming in and falling there and these poor roots are unable to breathe it was in a terrible terrible condition we literally had to pull out each one of them and believe it or not after collecting all the rubble there was nobody to take the trash we had to literally beg people to take the trash there was so much of trash uh, so which uh, area was this kalpana uh, this was uh, somewhere north only kerala i've forgotten the name of the place okay i so, went with konkan and uh, konkan explorers okay so we went on a sh their ship and uh, we did this cleaning truly when we finished no we actually felt the mangroves thanking us saying that oh thank god from today i can breathe yeah yes when passing around you know on our roads also even go to panjim or from panjim you know going further down towards margaon you can see all the mangroves and i see a lot of plastic you know a lot of plastic bags and all stuck on them yeah so i can understand what you mean by they can't breathe because of all of that it's really bad and it's so sad that people are insensitive to it so of the notion that the mangroves are causing the problem and flooding in 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 panjim and around all the creeks around there panjim is surrounded by creeks you know up in the they, they feel yeah. that the water flowing is stopped because we have these mangroves that have that have just grown or people have just grown them with no uh, idea you know but actually mangroves launch themselves which is great but what happened to the bunding and what happened to all of this that's supposed to be the government's duty to keep those bunding or with the organization that's in charge of these to maintain them and maintain these sluice gates and of course garbage is another ball game oh. together that <laughs> you, you can talk to a top ass on garbage 
<laughs> so <laughs> i'll tell you it was so pathetic garbage you just can't uh, talk so about it to hear that islands like divar and choro there's a fantastic group of youngsters that have started collecting the garbage imagine what those people can do yes. uh, with their garbage so somebody's taken the initiative and collecting it and i was hoping to 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 link with them and bring them and and every sarpanch should take it up it was the sarpanch's initiative with this organization and i think more of us should take call upon them instead of waiting for these ma major plants to happen and who's setting fire to what and which we just do it in our own little wardos and villages absolutely i are totally agree with you rovan it is like charity breeds at home start here yeah. start by yourself Yes. don't wait for somebody else to start don't blame the starter yeah don't blame and the blame game doesn't help at all correct so yes very very appreciable that you know kalpana you also went with that team and uh, was doing that clean up work and uh, like we do have so many beach clean ups now we need to have mangrove clean ups too with uh, nice gumboots and all that so you know make it a uh, 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 campaign of its own, but of course, uh, and uh, I think from what you all have spoken and shared about, you know, the the multiple things that mangroves do, I think we have to put more emphasis on keeping the mangroves clean than keeping the beaches clean, because beaches, you know, they are just like a tourist attraction and people roaming around, but there's not so much work done on the beach than you know done on the mangrove. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, actually, there are a lot of people who clean up the beaches also, but our beaches are uh, so bad because every day there is a dumpage. Yes, yes. You know, you do weekly clean up. The next week, you go and see the same amount of dumpage is there again. So, so now, uh, any ideas on you know uh, what are the? Of course, clean up is one solution, and uh, as Romain has said, uh, fixing up the bunding and the sluice gates. is another solution and i think uh, a third part of the solution is uh, educating people about uh, these benefits i have not seen you know movies or short clips and all go around you know whether it's even i think in a 10 minute clip also you can really educate people on the you know what real work these mangroves are doing so that uh, there's a public awareness and when certain policies by the government or the state uh, come in you know to uh, clean up these mangroves because of all commercial considerations so i think only an educated uh, lot of people who know what you have presented today uh, what uh, you know kalpana presented today only people who know about that they can take a stand otherwise i think the average person here you know doesn't know what real work the mangroves do so thanks so much uh, for for sharing that any further ideas uh, or fixes for this problem one of the main things uh, daryl is like you said no awareness campaigns and i think uh, world wildlife fund no uh, world wildlife uh, wildlife fund is in the process of doing something for mangroves this year they've already come out with a program and i believe that they are already into this in certain places of the world and in india they are entering this year so me uh, so maybe you know you can get in touch with uh, wwf and uh, in fact i have written a mail to them regarding this i i have actually told them i'm ready to devote some time and they wanted uh, webinars like to be like this to be conducted to groups of people they are going to have the groups ready we just need to conduct the webinar this is essential and i think every one of us know should every time we eat a fish on the plate think about the, from where it arises the origin is most important you can't get a final product without an origin yes very very right and um, so we'll do that with this uh, webinar too you know it's being recorded and we try to send it out to as many people as possible but yes much more crisp and to the point and shorter will be those special you know uh, presentations that you make uh, romain anything to add to the solution um well that, that was that was what i would say because that's exactly what i did i made a little uh, poster presentation not uh, what a fisherman would understand and when i talk to fishermen here that go fishing they have no clue that the roots of mangroves are bringing the fish 
uh, that the very basis is not, I mean, is not understood. So I think just a simple banner and a little talk in the local language, I don't speak the language. So um, this is this worked wonders. I had fishermen in Kovalam, which used to, we used to, we used to get the best of crabs. It used to go alive in buckets to Singapore because we had so much in, in Kovalam in, in, on the Mahabalipuram coast and now we have nothing. We have no fish and uh, disaster is there. The whole, the whole estuary is devoid of fish because there's no mangroves to come and breed in. So they didn't realize this. And so they said, yes, we can, we can put it down. And uh, but they didn't understand. They didn't even know as fishermen. This is, this is a job to actually uh, tell them, you know, it could be if somebody could do a nice little pictorial of the whole thing or, you know, it would work yeah. wonders uh, rather than, uh, you know, than a talk, I would say something more graphic. You know, that's what I, you know, I did it in terms of a poster, but in Tamil. So that they would understand and said, please, they were falling at my feet, please put the mangroves down because they were losing their, they lost two kilometers of the road and the sea was hitting, high tide was hitting in their homes. 2,000 families in Kolam were affected by this. And you had the Taj oh, very close by who had sunk all these things to protect themselves from the ingress of seawater. Oh, the Romain, your mention of Taj also reminds me. Goa's yeah. Taj. Oberoi, Holiday Inn, everybody yeah. has destroyed mangroves here. Yes. Yeah. And so the village and, and the Taj. Yeah. And so, I, Daryl, another thing we really need to do is go to the mangrove areas and tell the people. Yes. Are you aware what you are losing out on? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That works a one on one. They one on, yeah, know. right. They didn't know this. And I said, I'm ready to put down the trees for you, you know. And then I went to the Taj and I said, look, they butting the wall fell down. <laughs> with, with the, <laughs> and I said, you deserve it after that, you know, because after my talk with them and they said, you know, I met everybody and they said, uh, okay, we'll do that. I said, all you need to do is give me some funding to do this, you know, so that we put up this protection. And they said, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I met all of them, corporate social responsibility. And, and then after that, in 2015, I heard the wall came down and I think the fishermen would have been clapping for that because... They didn't because they had sunk these uh, these structures to protect the entire Taj fishing Taj uh, Taj fishing village there fishermen's cove okay. fishermen's cove yeah so yeah I think fishermen are very very approachable it's just that they're so scared and they're the poorest in Chennai whereas in Goa they're the richest mm, right so there's a shift here so oh. they wouldn't like to lose their bucks whereas Chennai they you want to find the poorest uh, job that they have because they're so much in debt that they have to go to the middlemen. They don't make any money. That's why they just get drunk and then they, the wives just sell whatever and then the middlemen are there to collect their debts. They can't even fix their boats, whereas it's not the case in Goa. So I, I would imagine if we, can, we made this, uh, did this awareness, the Goans are not going to like to lose what they have. Uh, Romain, I would just like to add one thing on this. The traditional fishing, no? Yes. The Those people are the sufferers. Yes. The trawlers and the bull uh, trawlers and all, they are having money. Yes. The traditional uh, fishermen are the ones we have to get, get, get to. Correct. Them. It's only the traditional ones. Yeah. Go out on the, in these tiny little canoes and, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah. In fact, yes. I spoke to them in, in this village and they never knew about this. They said, oh, really? There's the mangrove it has to be there for, for the fish. And I said, yes, you know, so mm. it's, the, it's, it's innocence and it's a lack yes. of awareness, which should have right. been taken up by, by fisheries or somebody, you know. Yes, of course, uh, you know, the, fish, uh, the fisheries department should have been doing this education <laughs> if they had some real plans to conserve fish, you know, and. Uh... Daryl, let me just interrupt you. <laughs> there is LED fishing on the trawler, uh, trawlers. How many years it took them to say, no, we will not have LED fishing on the trawlers. The fisheries department is very slow. The departments are very slow to take action. By the time they take action, no, we will not have any mangroves in us, uh, Goa. Correct. That's right. And we already don't have uh, much fish here in Goa because that's why the you know fish is coming from uh, Karnataka. And right, from, uh, right, Sabantwadi right. Absolutely. And from Bengurla and from Sabantwadi. Right. So, yeah, high time that, you know, we 
uh, this in four yeah this education really needs to go down to the fishermen and uh, you know one to one uh, rumin uh, as you are suggesting the uh, most yeah. important so we'll go on to our next uh, topic uh, which is also you know with conservation and it's about uh, forest nurseries now uh, rumin could so could you share with us uh, why are forest nurseries important and uh, what what can they do for us well um to start with when i set about uh, taking on a tree planting pro- project uh, and i wanted to do it systematically every monsoon season and i needed trees so why it is important is as i told you again this was started in chennai and chennai is a water starved city so i had to work with the monsoons and i wanted the tree cover i wanted to change climate conditions over there because it's sweltering heat uh, this there's more concrete than than there are trees barring we are misled by believing that one little uh, alcove of the gandhi national park or the iit is fine that we're okay we're doing okay because we have this so many acres in the heart of the city the lungs of the city but what happens chennai is a big city and it's spread out so far and wide so with with development and with urbanization it's it's been lopped off the trees have been going and giving way and so are the water bodies being filled up filled up chennai has numerous lakes but they've all been filled up now with buildings and then they started with the temple tanks which were you know supposed to be the 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 storehouse for i mean for for water and it was always the case that it was maintained by the temple trust anyway i just saw the need for trees when i realized number one about you know the mangroves if that is going to be uh, decimated i better take up the trees and why trees to change your climate conditions a polluted city that it is uh, a good percentage of chennai uh, the people the illness is uh, lung cancer and lung diseases and breathing problems and asthmatic cases so i said okay let me start it in my small way and i started what is called because i couldn't get the required um, trees to match my ambition which was systematically if i could do x x number of saplings per year like i and we said so me like 50000 saplings a month and then in a period of uh, of of 8 years by creating these mini forests i could change things in pockets in chennai now they were not ready the forest department was not ready or interested in supporting my uh, my ambition because i went about tackling the 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 education departments which is all the directorates of education because they had the biggest campuses first i ensured who wants trees and then i set about going to the forest department when i realized they're going to be a stumbling block to this whole thing i said no i got to i've got to have my own nursery which doesn't limit me then to the type of species put the species where they belong if it's salt resistant or if it's saline i mean saline resistant what i mean salt resistant then put it there so that the tree can grow don't go putting trees that will die in a salt water condition so that was what i concentrated on because chennai realized more and more areas were were not supporting fresh fresh water trees which is like fruit trees and others were dying in certain areas the classic area was velicherry when i went there for tree planting they said oh we can't tell us why our trees are dying firstly and then then you start your tree planting project that is how i discovered the sea water intrusion so i set about starting this and i realized if it's done in a systematic way there's no stopping me the sky was the limit the sky was the limit for species i would just collect i had a band of 12 little students from representing different schools in this problematic area and we went out and we collected our seeds and made a perfect seed bank so we didn't have to approach the forest department or anybody for that matter i was given a green card to, by the iit chennai to go in there and have these picnics with my kids so we went out on weekends and holidays i have a pickup jeep so it was fun for them and ice creams and snacks it was like fun so we set up and the iit went a step further by giving me space in the iit to set up my forest nursery so that i didn't have mortality in carrying it back 50 kilometers to my farm 
So we wound off there and then we took it and we transplanted. So I also harvested saplings from under the trees because they are wasted saplings, but they're gorgeous trees that I can't get anywhere. You know, if anybody knows what the IIT is, it's a genetic resource for the city of Chennai. So that's where I got my trees. I got more than 50 species of trees just like that. It was a cakewalk every weekend. And so I came back and the kids followed me to the farm on their holidays and we planted away in packets. We didn't have, I didn't have workers. I didn't have, I just used volunteers, little kids. And before we knew it, we had that, I, I put out a video, which is all the trees that grew by these little kids from a seed. So I called it the seed to sapling, sapling to ground, care and nurturing program. So I gave it to closed uh, institutes that could take care of it in most places. And for, for, of course, road planting, I just contacted the shops and said, look, why don't you just water this, wash your hands because you know, it's a custom in Chennai to eat with your hands. And so I said, how about a little mug of water when you wash your hands on the trees? And like this, we did these trees and the kids monitored it as, as tree marshals. So wouldn't that be a lovely thing to start here? I've been plugging on and trying to excite people. I think the complacency is we have enough trees. You know, whereas Chennai was getting mm. there. <coughs> true, and true. well, it won't be long before Goa has a problem like that. You're taking removings. We lost 60,000 trees in Chennai with the Varda and a lot in the floods. Imagine what's going to happen to Goa, this tiny, teeny, weeny little state, which Chennai can put in its pocket, you know? What's it going to do if you, if you lop off your trees at the rate they're thinking of lopping and lopped off also? Yeah, that uh, road widening and uh, the Sagarmala is killing it, no? Yeah, we've already lost thousands, yeah, I think. I don't thousands, know, yeah, absolutely. 3,000 trees and now another for the airport and then for coal and, and you name it. it yeah, right, 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 absolutely. And definitely this widening will remove the rest of the mangroves. Right, absolutely. They're not going to be bothered. They're going to say, it's business as usual, we have to do it. It's business over, over nature. So, Ramin, is the, you know, forest department of Goa, uh, I, I've heard uh, quite often that they are, you know, the, you can go and take uh, a lot of different saplings <laughs> there and plant them in your area. So, yes. uh, how, how is that uh, going? Do people really go there? Is there any program? I didn't have to go there because I had some saplings which I had raised here for the planting program in our village. Yes. I think, like you say, I better start. Uh, uh, Romain, I'll just help you on this. Uh, yeah. The Panjim uh, Forest Department uh, barrel doesn't seem to have much stuff. But the Madga one has a lot of good stuff and they come out with programs where they are ready to give, but in huge numbers. They don't want one or two uh, uh, saplings to be taken away. But if you go to Madga, you can collect one or two saplings of whatever they have. I know people who have gone there and collected also. And I know that a lot of people have done it during this COVID time. No, In between, there was a festival by them for sap, uh, seeding and sapling and everything. So they sold a lot uh, from there. We, we did get some from the Biodiversity Board from okay. Salikau. They distributed, oh. uh, but it was kind of rationed out. Mm -hmm. And then the MLA of the area put in a representation like, can we have some more? Of course, it never came. On its okay. way, on its way, and it never came, and the rains also went. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. If you're working on a timeline, at least that's, my, that's the way I do it. I wouldn't be restricted by, you know, will they give me, will they not? Can I have this? Can I have not? <laughs> you know, like I would just put it down if I had the land and I would just do it. And, and I was given the land. I was given five acres for this job in Chennai uh, just to do my dream. And I can keep churning out and churning out according to the need. But of course, you do need the money to, to plant and everything. But it so happened, as I told you, I gave it to institutes that needed it, like the, the army, the, the, the navy, you know, and they got the bucks, they've got the manpower that are just cleaning guns all day and all this, so it was good. And, uh, and the children of the schools, government schools, I had, I had really a tremendous success with the government schools. And in fact, they, they call me every year, every year, and I say, yes, you get your saplings because you looked after them. You see, there's also a problem when things are given free, which these organizations 
uh, are scared about, like, you know, the forest department or the biodiversity board, they say, are you looking after it? It's the care and the nurturing. And if, you, if I put my name to it, then I have to ensure that it's done. So I keep a tab on the club where we've planted this. And I said, now the rains have stopped. Now get your water systems in place and see that it's watered. But you know, Goa has four months of rain, whereas Chennai is lucky to get two weeks of good solid rain. So you can imagine <laughs> the struggle to get trees to grow there. And now, isn't this something to think about? Where even after the monsoon, you don't want to look after it? Or you're scared, you don't want more, more, more than what you need, you know? So that's, that's something that has to be follow up of care and nurturing. That's why it's called the sapling to seed to sapling, sapling to ground care and nurturing program. Either we do it or we subcontract it to somebody or we get volunteers, but that has to be spearheaded by the local, a local group that will monitor like the garbage collection of these islands. Similarly, if this, this is so doable in Goa, you know, if I had, if I had a team that would help, uh, we can do wonders in tree planting. I mean, I, I have, I've got seeds from Chennai and I have all the species that we can grow here, but I need to put this down and have flat ground and good sunlight and a water line. So it, it can happen. We don't need, yes, let the forest department do their job and whatever, but then you're limited or you're, you're, you're limited. So the more the merrier. If each water took it up, and that's what I'm trying to trying to push here because the club has a lot of land around and common hard land, but there's hitches here and hitches there. But if I can get around it, it was my first attempt this year. And uh, I had to show them that I'm growing it in my compound, first of all, you know, that I know what I know, you know, and it's all it's all in the doing actually so then you have to you have to do a little bit of uh, spade work in the beginning but imagine if each vado could identify spaces and that's what i did with these young kids i said now on your street tell me how many you need and in this place and in that place you know just let give me the feedback how many and we had volunteers from an it company really doing a door to door you know, how many they could plant and where it was not possible and where, and be very careful about wires and things like that. Overhead wires, no breaking pipelines. Don't bring a, a problem where you're kicked out from the area, you know. That's very yeah. important. And the kind of trees, not something yes. oversized, you know, like a rain tree bang, you know, in the middle of the road or something. I see, I see plantations of this sort, you know, like where people don't understand the girth of the tree or it's not going to be a tiny little one for the rest of its life and on the road. So be sensible about distances, about wires, be socially conscious. When which you're doing the, uh, Roman, which of the common trees uh, are you planting teak or... Not teak. Are, are there some fruit trees or what kind of trees? Well, they wanted fruit trees around the club. I said, but we have monkeys. We like to handle that. So okay. what, well, the biodiversity board was a majority was fruit trees. And we are in monkey land here where there's a lot of problems. So if you, ha if you plant forest trees, just the local species that are here, which is the terminalia species that grows with the mangroves. You see, we are in mangrove area. So if we grew those species like the badam, almond, and all the other terminalia. There Cashews are also for that matter. Cajus, yeah. So, so the biodiversity go, go, but they got one foot saplings. It's going to take ages. Understand? Mm -hmm. But if we raise them, I, I never plant one foot saplings. I raise them to an optimum height in, in my nursery and give them at that height. So they don't need a tree guard because of Chen, Chennai's situation and saying the same thing can be done here. You don't need a tree guard then you can go outright and plant them on roads with no problem at all. And um, Mortality rate is almost nil. Pre-monsoon, you've got four months of rain. Imagine what's going to happen to that tree. You'll have, an over, you'll have a full grown tree in six months, bearing fruit or whatever. Yeah, there are beautiful forest trees that bear fruit. That will bring the birds, the, the bees and everything. You have, I mean, you have it, Daryl, in your place. What do you think that tree was? That's a forest tree. Yes, at the center, the, the yeah. time we came to the center, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, Daryl's house is all surrounded by a forest only, I guess. Those flowers attract the bees and the butterflies and you know, pollinators. 
right there i showed you what i have in my nursery in chennai and you know what's what's great is i got a call i'm mean, just going back to mangroves the forest department called me from chennai <laughs> sitting in goa and they said we want to plant mangroves please help us please can you give us some mangroves because the north is going being compromised with the no breaching of of the the, the beaches and uh, sand is being sucked out for the same reason i'm i'm telling you we have big wave action there it's just starting in goa paloli mm. beach faced something recently uh, kalpana you may have yes heard about that and everybody right. was like oh wow what what's this like you know and they built all these structures and well that's the start of it that's the start of your problems what i just told you happened in kovalam and all these big farm houses on the ecr the problem is no romain that uh, people they are, they don't open their eyes yeah they see something it it's like momentary it's like reading a newspaper they read it today and forget it tomorrow there is the impact has to actually and sink into your head what i'm scared and i'm telling you when i say the word scared for goa it's not like chennai it is not like chennai you're so vulnerable you're trapped you know just a strip Mm. This is trip between the devil and the deep blue sea, you know. What are you going to do if something like this happens? The wave action in and on all this, you know, it's going to happen. Baga Beach, Kavasoli, and all these places. Actually, the seas will just eat us up. Yes. So you're, you're saying it. I didn't want to say this on a on a platform, but unfortunately, that sounds. That's, that's the truth. That's the because, truth. Because see, as it is, Antarctic icebergs are melting. Yeah. Sea levels are going to go up. Yeah, the mangroves are the only protection for us against the, the sea level rise. The only, only, only. Yes, the only protection for us is the mangroves. Yeah, and if we are going to kill the mangroves, don't think of a Goa existing. Bombay will of course go, but Goa is no far. Yeah, Bombay, another ball game, but Goa. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, how do we protect Goa from this? because they're not going to get a second chance right thank you thank you for those warnings uh, romain uh, kalpana uh, we have just uh, you know now completed an hour so i i think there's just one two questions so i'll take up the questions the one is from morin fernandez what steps do you think each one of us as residents of goa can do in our everyday lives to conserve our mangrove okay uh one thing i feel every goan should do is keep your eyes open keep your ears open and start talking if you see somebody doing something ask questions you may be nobody but if you ask a question people start wondering who you are start asking the questions if you ask a question no 10 people will come around you wondering oh what is being asked you have a crowd already there start doing it start asking why is this why is this happening today what is being done why is the digging going on ask the moment people are aware of this they know that somebody is talking about it that itself is a thrill that itself will kill the uh, thing that is going on it's a start we have to start somewhere right right that's right uh, kalpana any uh, online resource any website where some of these videos uh, are there which uh, you know the common man can download and share with others especially oh, about i the... have one video with me i could share that direct i got it from youtube but you can search on youtube there are a lot of videos on this oh, okay uh romain any ideas there should be any amount of videos globally made you know because how do they change the the mindset of people in african countries and you know wherever it's possible but it probably has to be you know we have to target it, it we have to subtitle it or do something so that it's uh, it's uh, understood by the local uh, population here because it's no point in having it in in, in english because i think most of the fishermen are need to have it in konkani or or marathi or whatever is yes the okay, language and it can easily be subtitled yes as kalpana will know 
she, you probably had a lot of access to the, the NIO. And yeah, yeah. They have been NIO a does a lot of work, but then the work done was pretty late. Even in the case of Princess, no, it was done very late. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But uh, Daryl, I'll tell you a simple example of what I said. We look at plastic bottles everywhere, right? None of us raise a question when you see a tourist throwing that plastic bottle, no? Nobody will question why he's throwing it. It's our Goa, no? Yes. Why not question it? When it so happened at one point of time near the Panjim market, there was a uh, Pani Puri wala and one girl had Pani Puri and she just threw the cup like that. When she was questioned, she got so embarrassed and people around her kept looking at her. That is enough. Your job is done. Start doing that is what I'm trying to say. Yes, like, thank uh, you. Maureen asked. Maureen. Yeah, uh, right. Maureen is from this village, Sirisai. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Girl was helping me with a lot. Oh, okay, okay, I've okay. Got, I've got another arm that side, you know, across the road. <laughs> okay. She's talking, Wonderful. She's talking from a point of she wants to make that change. Yeah. So we, she's been trying to convince also the local people. So I think we need someone like Maureen. And there was another young girl in Divar Island who went around house to house, you know, trying to find out all the local traditional methods of doing several things and. Maybe this, this, this mangrove thing, step by step, can be explained. Uh, we were thinking of doing a little talk again at the club, but because of the COVID and uh, uh, sort of situation of a scare here, we've kept things on hold right now. But just like that, uh, what, what I was telling Maureen we would do with the fishermen, we'll call them over to the club and we'll give them a little talk and somebody can translate what I'm saying or, you know, and, and it'll just be a a very, uh, that's what, I mean, let's not make it too sophisticated or something like that, you know, it has to be a soul transfer, you know, where... Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe uh, you know, uh, uh, with the presentation also, because, you know, the, the pictures that uh, uh, Kalpana showed also, you know, then put a clear uh, matching with what they are seeing yes. in their yeah. life. So they yeah. can recognize all of those, you know, mangroves. Yeah. Uh, so a, that's a question from uh, Romain. I don't mind helping you if you want some presentation made or something like that. I could help. Yes, you. I was going to say, and Maureen is, is a sweet girl. She's also been helping me amidst her no. lockdown or whatever. She has her own work. But yes, because you are the mangrove, you are the marine person. So yeah, we can we could we could do something like this. You know, yes. you know, we have to yes. graphically show fish and everything. You know, yes. coming in without any explanation. You know how you know. Right. We need to have someone like that who can... Uh, yes, in fact, I, I was planning to put in a video. I didn't get enough time to, to cut the video and show me show exactly what I wanted to show. Yes. Then that that will be yeah. really helpful. Yeah. And you speak no. Konkani, no? You speak... No, 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 no. <laughs> no oh. Konkani. I can speak English and Hindi, not Konkani. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So please uh, go ahead and do that video, Kalpana, and we can yeah, have somebody I'll put the that. subtitles. And yes. that's the question asked by, you know, Tammy Shahani. I request, request everyone, if they have questions, to please put it in the Q&A box. But I've got yeah. a question from Tammy in the chat box. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning. Can uh, either of our panelists help conduct awareness tours to talk about uh, small, to talk to small groups and maybe we can brainstorm? Uh, about what we can do, maybe once a month. So, yes, yes the first thing I would suggest as a common resource, uh, you know, the, the video that you make, uh, and anybody here who wants to share any of these, you know, conservation techniques, uh, we have a group on Facebook called Earth Keepers Connect. Okay, and that's uh, the group that is organizing this entire uh, New Earth Summit. And we have in that group people from India and overseas as well. So go to Facebook and to the group Earth Keepers Connect. And, you know, that's the first place, Kalpana, where you can share this video. And okay. you can put, you know, Konkani subtitles also. I and will pass it on to you, Daryl, and you can put the Konkani subtitles in there. Sure, sure. And before that also, we should make this small group, whether it's on WhatsApp or Facebook, you know. And we get, there are many of our, our friends here in Goa who are into, you know, coastal conservation. Uh, mm. We'll get them in it too, to, you know, share sure. all the resources. Or let me find out. Uh, if they already have, you know, an active group on Facebook, uh, especially for marine conservation, 
that's where, where we can put all our resources and you know invite people to it so they can take all those videos and all that education and share it everywhere right but yes so do keep in mind that uh, uh, tammy's request that so let let's do it on the ground as well you know maybe once a month actually so i don't mind uh, romain what about you let's put it together and do it yeah. for tammy yeah and you know what daryl said uh, was daryl that you said uh, WWF, oh no, no, sorry, Kalpana, you said that WWF was going to get into mangroves. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So one of the things uh, that I did with a group here, uh, when I had a group of people some years ago, Choro Island was, my, was where I collected my seeds. You know, there's a lot of seeds and I used to collect them just floating on the water and take them back to Chennai on a bus. And uh, well, this is a nice thing for like a nature trek which i think is happening a lot of groups are going to shoro island but imagine if they can be taught how to grow a mangrove it's nothing technical about it actually if if everybody like we are we are next to a mangrove area and the soil is there romain actually your idea is so beautiful i'll tell you yeah. everybody now is talking about microgreens growing their own vegetable growing their own fruits or growing their own plants so yes. why not grow your own mangroves? Exactly. I grew it in my kitchen. I grew it in my utility room in Chennai. It was so easy because the whole place was brackish water. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just dipped a bucket outside in the nearest pond and watered my mangroves. And they grew happily next to my washing machine. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. And that's, you know, there's a uh, linked question from Werner Gypsy. Uh, yeah. What can we do with the mangrove boat walk? behind the Pato Library in Panjim. Oh, yes, that is a beautiful place. Yes. Right, Daryl, I wanted to mention this. It's such a beautiful place. Yeah. I think, no, we should have regular school college trips, young group trips going there, yes. looking at what it is and then making advantage of that. I know they go for butterflies or something there. Oh, but the, the whole thing is out of wood, you know, and it's so beautiful there. Okay, so that's, I, I read about this, okay. Yeah, it should be a beautiful place like that. See, like the IIT, it, there has to be a catch here. We've got to excite people to, you know, to the skies, you know. So they have to know that they're doing something so unusual that's going to, you know, it's never been done before. And, you know, and, and take their little mangrove seeds back and plant them because uh, around the corner you have your kazans and you have the water that you can water. Yes, 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 yes. But nobody tells you to go and plant them up without knowing these things but you imagine if every little school kid could grow five or six mangroves or you know a little pocket of mangroves and what delight is that never been done before yes a wonderful outdoor activity and then to you know go often and uh, maintain it and grow some more yeah um, yes absolutely yes but yeah to, what, what needs to be preceded is of course those you know well-made presentations with all the flow and all that so people can get this uh, you know entire thing that you have explained today of the different uh, aspects of you know of what mangroves really do uh, for us so since kalpana is in the in the whole computer uh, business yes <laughs> now that she is, uh, yeah i would definitely love business. to help you all with the presentations or a video whatever i can whichever way i can help actually yeah. even the hikes and all i don't mind coming along with you all i am telling you the Mangrove cleaning was such an eye opener for me. I said, "What the hell? We mm. don't care about nature. We take it for granted, and that is why we have reached this stage." Yeah. So, so I'll do that definitely. Get in touch with our, you know, uh, people who are into ocean conservation and sea conservation and mangroves too. And uh, let's see uh, online uh, where there. I'm sure there must be already a group there, uh, whether in Facebook or Telegram or. Uh, a website and let's get onto them and share resources and get resources from them so we can you know share all of this info. NIO NIO should be should be with a lot of sitting on a lot of information. Oh okay. yeah NIO sits on a lot of information without divulging all those things to you. But uh, things like these easy. you know for public consumption or public awareness aren't they available on the website or downloadable? The uh, website that uh, paper scientist papers are available there's one lady who has done a lot of work on the, the Govan, uh, uh, this one, uh, pollutions, I think. I think her name is Aparna Shedgonkar or something. I'm not very sure. 
I'll uh, check it out and tell you, Daniel. But these people, if the papers are published, you get the data. If the papers are not published, they are not going to divulge any data. But it depends how long we take to publish a paper, don't you know? Yeah, that? definitely yes. And uh, I think you know, uh, publishing papers and a lot of reading, most people will not do, common man. But I, if, I think the best thing that will happen is if somebody or a group of people, a committee approaches, you know, NIO in Goa, and uh, ask them to you know put this section on their website, which is you know education awareness videos, uh, that would be such an authentic resource. Oh, that is one suggestion I have. They have a lot of SRS, that is senior research fellows, doing the MSCs and PhDs over there. They are uh, uh, education excellence center, actually. So if we can catch hold of these SRFs and all them, and create an awareness saying that we are looking at looking doing something for the mangroves, would you be interested to become a part of it? I'm sure we might get at least a handful of them. Okay. Okay, that's a very good idea. Thank you, and uh, I think we're done with our questions. Uh, let me just check in the chat box if there's anything more. And yes, so some resources shared by Werner, some links. Um, yeah, actually, I saw them putting up the link. Even go uh, that uh, Konkan Explorers link is there. So people can go there. Of course, they are only cruises, but off and on, they, can, uh, they have these mangrove cleaning as a part of their uh, ES, uh, CSR maybe. And they're good. They're really good. Okay. So thank you, uh, finally, Romain, uh, for being on the panel with us and sharing us your experiences and learning from, uh, you know, from Chennai and uh, also for the warning, what can happen to Goa that's already started happening in a, uh, you know, uh, in a small way. And uh, Kalpana, thank you for the presentation and for your enthusiasm and insights as well. And let's look forward to building a team and, you know, uh, in Goa and taking this forward and bringing more awareness of uh, the value, purpose and function and importance of mangroves and also our forest trees. And uh, uh, let's, you know, also start making forest nurseries if we are not getting the full range or a good range of trees from the forest department. Thank you once again and uh, goodbye and see you all.